Got 20 seconds. I'm on, man, to go. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Good. Get those knees up. Explode. Good. Explode. Let's go. Up. Rock four. Let's go. One more. Go. You are listening to the Fight Strength Podcast with your hosts, Bill Daru and Jason Burgos. Welcome back, everyone, to an all-new episode of the Fight Strength Podcast. We have now reached our 20th episode, like, which this is just pretty damn cool. We're already at 20, but I am Jason Burgos, contributing editor for MMASucker.com, and with me, as always, is the hardest-working man in the strength and conditioning industry, lacking much, much sleep, the guru of athlete building at the world-renowned MMA gym, American top team, the one and only Phil Daru. Phil, I hope you're awake over there. I'm good. I, I like that intro. Once again, you always, you always, you know, you, you produce, you make sure that it, it comes out very well. So, Jason, I commend you on that. Thank you for that intro. Thank you. You can't see, but I'm bowing right now. You can't see. Mm-hmm. Stop blushing. It's okay. <laughs> and now, on this week's episode, we will have the pleasure of bringing on one of the top light heavyweights in Bellator. He's the man that will be facing Ryan Bader for the division's title at Bellator 186. And that is the Englishman, Ling- Linton Vassell. But before that, now, Phil, you, ha- you have started to get even busier of late, which is, I didn't even think that was possible for you to be even busier. But uh, you've been doing some recent work with Kabuki, Kabuki Strength. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the, the, the stuff you've been doing lately with the guys over there? Yeah, so we just wrapped up a – we did a podcast together last week. That will be out sometime this week, so check that out on their uh, Strength Chat podcast. But uh, now I'm working with them as an ambassador for the equipment and as far as for their whole merchandise selection. So if you are looking to get involved with them, if you're looking to buy some of their equipment, some of the best bars and, you know, just exercise equipment along with, you know, uh, prehab and rehabilitation technique and soft tissue uh, implements, check their website, kabukistrength.com. And then you can also get a discount code from me. It's Daru10. You'll get 10% off all your purchases so check that out also you know i'll be working with them closely as far as for my own you know my own programming for my training as a power lifter so been working with those guys closely and the future looks bright for me and them going further i saw that that uh, you posted the uh the daru 10 how awesome is that that you your name is used as a discount code for some stuff that's pretty awesome i know right yeah i know right <laughs> so now it's a household name so this is what happens when you can have your last name, the first letter of your last name become a lowercase letter, it's it means you're doing something. So <laughs> if it's not capitalized and people are just saying just D-A-R-U, then you know it's just a household name now. So we're good. <laughs> I think the next level now from once you've had your name as a discount code, the next threshold to make is either be in a video game or have a toy made after you. I think that's the next goal you have to have. I don't know about a toy, man. I no, wonder, wonder you know how what? that the would little have... Viking to have a little Daru dad. You're right. I should have something. <laughs> Maybe a fat head because my head's really big. <laughs> oh, and do, like the picture you have for your Instagram interview for your Skype, just ah, that picture. Yeah, it's it's totally like it's exploding through the screen. <laughs> it's awesome. Now, I also want to mention for anyone interested in sponsorship and advertising opportunities on the show. Uh, you can find an explanation of what we offer pinned to the top of our Facebook page, or you can email us at fightstrengthpodcast at gmail.com for information. But speaking of sponsors, before we continue on, I have to ask our listeners out there, are you a man who has felt a decrease in your energy levels and difficulty concentrating? Are you packing on pounds faster than you used to it and losing your muscle mass? Or maybe you've even felt a lacking your sex drive of late. If you are, you may be suffering from low testosterone levels. If you are looking for an answer and live in the Jupiter, Florida area, then Novagenics is the place you need to go to get back to where you want to be. The medical team at Novagenics has helped hundreds of men improve the way they feel and live their lives with their low T therapy treatments. The benefits of taking testosterone are numerous. I mean, we've seen what it's done for Dan Henderson and Vitor Belfort and, and, and MMA, but if, we, mm-hmm. if, but if you, we want to get specific, it can help burn fat, improve mood and focus, build lean muscle, 
improve bone strength and density, improve your libido. Who doesn't want that? And of course, <laughs> just make you feel and look better. I mean, simply as that. But for more information, call the Novagetics Clinic today at 561-277-8260. You can find them on Facebook and on Twitter at Novagenics. I mean, why wait? Go feel better today. Big thank you to the Novagenics crew for sponsoring us. They're sponsoring the Ask the Ruse segment of the show today. Now, getting into our first question from Brad Graham 88 on Instagram. He asks you, Phil, I run a strength and conditioning program for mm -hmm. a Taekwondo team, and I wanted to know if you have any advice for tracking rehab and preventing mm -hmm. injuries that are that's scalable for a 40-plus person team. Uh, the yeah. main issue comes in tracking and monitoring efficiently slash effectively. Any yeah. advice would help. That is Brad Graham 88 on Instagram. Yeah, Brad. So that's a tough one. But fortunately, that's something I'm well familiar with since having so many different fighters at once. Um, in the case of tracking, I always make sure that my fighters fill out a questionnaire or at least a health history report before we start to train. Once that's established, then I find out if they have any injuries or ailments that when I will give that well, I'll give them like a uh, some homework, what I call it, uh, that that could be that could be anything from corrective exercises to prehab or rehab drills to facilitate the recovery and optimize the progression of camp going further further. So that's that's the start point of it. Now, each individual is then monitored in their warm ups and I make it a point to ask each of my athletes how they are feeling that day. You know, also make it a point to contact your athletes each day to see, like, what they're doing with their skill-specific training, how they were feeling, you know, how it went, and, and everything in between from there. Open lines of communication and trust is a major factor in the progression of your athletes. So make it, you know, make it a point, you know, for for you to actually hit these guys up on a constant basis. You, If you do this each and every day, you're going to see a lot more progression and result there, and you can keep your athletes safe and healthy. So from that point, you know, it, it's pretty much cut and dry. I mean, you can't really fully monitor 40 or 50 plus guys and girls at the same time. You just have to make sure that you you have a a, uh, a procedure that you go about doing in between or in the beginning of your training sessions. So that do makes you, sense? I mean, do you try to do anything like a, a spreadsheet or files on people or just too difficult to try to manage that with that so much information all the time? So each individual will have their own you know, criteria of file that I know that, you know, what they're doing, but from a standard approach, you know, we always make sure that all my systems are the same, but there are auto regulatory ways about going about, you know, training each individual. If they have some ailments or injuries, something like a, uh, like for instance, like a, like a King Mo, obviously, you know, he had, he's had multiple injuries throughout his years of training and, and, and fighting. So for me, I'm not going to have him do similar things than what a, a healthy young prospect would do. So we can alter those those exercises and those programs accordingly. And then also, like I said, give them homework from a corrective exercise standpoint to help, you know, initiate that process, the process of going further. Hmm. All right. Now for our second question of the segment, uh, new Josu. Banegas Saibe. I hope I'm saying it right. Every time I'm always worried. I know strength and conditioning can be highly specific from athlete to athlete, but in general, what are the major differences, if any, in combat strength and conditioning training between male and female athletes? I, I like this question. I'm, I'm curious what you have to say. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, the issue, the issue, the fact that that female fighters, speaking, you know, speaking in general, of course have less muscle mass and overall absolute strength than the male fighters. So for them, our first concern is to build up a base of strength and joint integrity, then working towards building strength endurance, then absolute strength, which will still, which will then trans transition into some speed, strength and explosive power. Now, like some male fighters, on the other hand, may already have a good amount of muscle, like a Tyron Willey or, or a Hector, Hector Lombard, for example, you know. Uh, then we could focus more on conditioning that muscle to withstand that lactic buildup. But for the females in general, um, I would just say just build up their body, making sure that we're getting good armor in there so they can withstand any type of load or any contact put upon them, you know, because it's a, it's a high impact sport. So we don't want them frail or easily to be broken. So we build up good calcium in the bones 
from, you know, strength training. So that's pretty much it, man. It's just kind of building up their body enough to where they still stay in their weight class, but they're strong enough to withstand the training practices and to, you know, make sure that they're not getting injured. I mean, see, this, this is, and I don't want to take this opportunity to bring this up. This is why this man is so talented. He has the stable of fighters and the loyalty he has at such a special and top-notch level gym. And this is why... For any of you fans out there that appreciate what Phil knows and what he does, you guys need to contact Fighters Only Magazine. Because Fighters Only Magazine does the World MMA Awards. We all know. We all listen, look at that. Look at the result. Who won Journalist of the Year and the Coach of the Year. They have a Trainers Award. And Phil can be a candidate for this. So, for real, go out there. Contact Fighters Only Magazine. I have. I, I've even, you know, tagged Phil and some of his fighters to let to let them know he needs to be nominated for this award for 2018. The guy got Joanna mm-hmm. Yonjacek, King Mo, Colby Covington might be having a huge win this weekend coming up. You know, mm-hmm. Dustin Poirier might have a, a big win coming up a few weeks after that. This is guys Phil mm-hmm. trained. These are elite level athletes. So please, if you're listening, respect this man. Holla <laughs> at Fighters Only Magazine on Twitter. Look it up. Holla at him. Tell him. Candidate. Hey. Phil Drew, thank, that's what you guys thank do. You. Thank you, Jason. I do appreciate that, man. But it'll be a huge honor if I do get, you know, even just just accepted into that running. So, I mean, if you can, that'd be awesome. If not, it's all good. I'm going to keep doing me and keep helping my fighters achieve greatness. But, uh, Jason, I do appreciate that, brother. Oh, you're welcome. And now, coming up now is going to be our guest segment, but it's being sponsored. We got another sponsor, y'all. We're doing big things now. We're being sponsored by the Iron Neck. You may have seen some fighters training their, their neck with the Iron Neck and wondered, what the heck is that guy doing? Mm-hmm. To build neck strength, most athletes use four-way machines, head harnesses, or neck bridging. But when using those tools, you're limiting yourself to linear movements, just front and back, side to side, and you put yourself at risk of injury. I mean, we've talked about this on the show. Uh, However, Mm -hmm. the Iron Neck allows you to increase neck strength and mobility in every possible position for true functional training. This means you can actually build neck strength through the same movements you make in your sport, moving freely across 360 degrees. The Iron Neck has adjustable linear and rotational resistance, giving you the highest level of control in designing progressive programs for athletes at every level. Also, by doing these exercises, and this is key to me, an athlete can improve their own physiologi- physiological defense against concussions. I mean, we've all heard about CTE and all the issues with concussions and everything and all these different sports. It's actually the rotational forces from a strike to the chin that twist the brainstem and cause loss of consciousness. So why not increase your, ne- your next rotational strength and turn mm-hmm. vulnerability into strength with the Iron Neck? This is a valuable tool for any athlete, trainer, or physical therapist looking to build strength, improve range of motion, and reduce risk of injury. If you are one of those people, you need to go over to the Iron Neck side because the guys have recently dropped their prices by $200. I mean, that's a big discount. You guys got to get on this. And listeners to the podcast can get an extra $25 off by using the code FIGHTSTRENGTH. Not only does Phil DeRue have a discount, Fight Strength Podcast now has a discount. Use Fight Strength at checkout. Follow them on Instagram at the Iron Neck and visit iron-neck.com to use that discount code and your Iron Neck will ship out same day. That's damn good. I mean, Phil, what's your thoughts on the Iron Neck? No, I, I've used it a couple of times and, and we've talked many a times about it. You know, trying to eliminate or at least reduce the the risk of concussions is a major key factor in any type of contact sport, especially in MMA and in football too, as well. Hockey, you know, even in soccer or in, you know, American, uh, American soccer, you know, it's, it's, um, it's something that, you know, needs to be done and needs to be worked on. And this is a good, it's a good uh, development that they've done. Actually. It also makes you look like Raiden from Mortal Kombat too, as well <laughs> as you're training it, yeah. but it, it's a good way to really work, you know, that sternocleidomastoid muscle, the neck muscles, you know, uh, just all the scalene muscles, levator scapulae, all that stuff to actually help with stabilizing that neck and that head. So it doesn't have any injuries, you know, going further, you know, so, I make sure that we are training the neck as much as possible. We do have one in the gym. So, you know, you'll see me working with these guys and girls on, you know, strengthening that neck up and and then the traps up as much as possible so we can eliminate or reduce the fact of those concussions. 
It is now time to bring on our guest. He has racked up 14 finishes in his 18 career wins. He has wins against two former Bellator light heavyweight champions in Emmanuel Noon and Liam McGeary, which was very impressive because he, he subbed them. He will be headlining Bellator 186 in a light heavyweight title match against Ryan Bader next month. Next month from the Bryce Jordan Center on the campus of Penn State University. And, fun tidbit, he is currently working in preparation of that major bout with a former guest of the show, and Dr. Corey Peacock, a.k.a. Doc Peacock. He is the Swarm, a.k.a. Linton Vassell. Linton, thank you so much for coming on the show with us this week. No worries. Thank you for having me. All right, all right. So, Linton, now how do you feel you match up physically with Ryan Bader and what has been your preparation as far as your strength and conditioning goes with Corey for this fight? I feel like I match up perfectly with, with Ryan because mm -hmm. people like, un <clears throat> sorry, underestimate my, my grappling skills. And it's going to be so great to actually, you know, show that a UK guy with no wrestling background in his entire life <laughs> will beat a guy that's been doing it his whole life. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we we match up well. Like, like he's he's powerful. I'm powerful. Mm -hmm. I've, got, I've got the range, the reach. You know, he's he's pretty pretty fast. Um, but we're going to match up really good. You know, because I like to scramble. So it's going to be very interesting when we do actually um, connect. But when I put my hands on him, he's not going to realize how strong I really am. Nice. And I think that's when he's going to realize, like, damn man, like this this bit. <laughs> Yeah, that's good, man. You know, so let's let's take a step back a little bit and and let's uh you know let the listeners know when did you decide to start training and competing and what what is something that you've you've always wanted to do or is it is it something that you kind of had to transition to from another sport or this always been a part of your lifestyle? Yeah, nice. No, this is this is me a one hundred percent. Me used to lift weights. Wrestle with my friends in the garden, just play fighting. Wrestle with my mum, just grab her and get her in a busting crab. Just, just mess. <laughs> no, nothing serious. I had no interest in fighting at all. Like I probably had about three fights on the street growing up. Um, I had no fights actually in school when I was a kid. All my fights were with adults. So everyone thought I was older. Um, but I had no interest in, in actually doing MMA. My friend. Um, who was compete at the time? Um, he used to fight, and he he always used to say, "Come, come to the gym, and you know, give it a go. You're a big guy, you're strong, you're athletic." And I was like, "No, I had no interest." I used to watch it on TV, and it wasn't until I was about 23, um, I actually, me and my friend were wrestling in the garden. I picked him up, and I slammed him. I like to call it the rock bottom. Um, <laughs> I give him the rock bottom. Um, he was for a little while, woke up, and then he was like, you have to come to the gym. So, <laughs> I, yeah, eventually right. I went to the gym, and I pretty much did the same to all the guys um, that were competing, and they were pros themselves. Um, our coach, Danny Batten, he was like, we've got something here. You're a big guy, you're strong. We will just obviously brush up and get you a bit more technical. Um, mm. And 11 years later, this is where I am now. Nice. Now, I often like to jump right into the MMA questions with our guests, but I want to start off a little different with first learning a little bit about how you are away from MMA. What are your passions in life that don't involve punching people in the face? Um, so obviously, when I actually do um, finish, you know, competing, um, I, want, I want to go into real estate. So I want to, like, build properties um, and sell them on. Um, I was a builder growing up for, for 15 years. Um, so I was building and going training. So that's that's a big, big passion that I've, I've always like had an eye into it. You know, and it would be good to obviously um, build my own property and, and and sell that. But as I say, that's that's something I'm gonna do after. I don't want to try and do it now while I'm competing. I, I'm giving 110 percent everything into what I do now, and then once I've finished, and then I'll invest um, into real estate. Oh, that's another question. Where were you raised and what was life like for a young Linton? Where, what were your dreams as a kid? What did you want to be other than rock-bottoming pe rock people all the time? <laughs> to, to be honest, um, 
when I was really young, probably about six or seven, it was something like a fireman, fireman, or like a police officer. Mm. Um, and then as I was growing up, I wanted to be a PE teacher. Um, and then as I got a little bit older, it was a wrestler. Uh, mm. And then, yeah, as I said, now is, is where I'm at now. I didn't think I'd be a bricklayer. Um, mm. But funny enough, my dad was a builder growing up. Um, and, pre- and he used to fight, he used to do boxing. So pretty much I just followed in my dad's footsteps, not even knowing that I was doing it, if you get what I mean. It wasn't like my mum or my dad said, do fighting and do bricklaying. I just, oh, I found a job. Oh, it's bricklaying. Oh, <laughs> oh well, I'm going to do mixed martial arts. Oh, hang on a minute, I'm fighting now. So it was pretty much just like that. Now, in, in a previous inter- interview and just now, you mentioned how, you know, pro fighting wasn't necessarily something that you planned or wanted to necessarily get into, but it's also said that it takes a special kind of person to be a fighter because it's so brutal on the body and even the psyche. Uh, you've had a successful career, and now you will get your second opportunity at the light heavyweight title. What is it about the sport that you do love and that gets you up in the morning to grind at it despite never having aspirations for this kind of work? It's, it's weird, like... I've always been a guy that, like, I like to do things. I can't just sit on my bum. I get so bored. So <laughs> I guess that's probably why I was always play fighting. Like, I'll just sit, be sitting there, grab someone, pick them up, and whatever. All at school, <laughs> anything. Um, and I say to my, my mum sitting down and, and stuff, my sister. And no one will say. Um, but I was always doing, like, either that or, or, um, or weights, um, I used to love athletics, so track in the field. So I was always doing doing something. Um, yeah, so pretty much, pretty much. Um, I think just going into MMA, it was just like I like to compete, playing playing computer games, board games, you name it. I, I like to, um, you know, I don't like to lose in, in whatever we're doing. It could be like walking. I have to walk a little bit faster than you. you know, so I just think I have that competitiveness in my body and fighting is you have to compete and I feel like I have to be the best I can't have someone beat me it's it's yeah it's not good I don't like that what, what would you say is your favorite computer games um fighting games <laughs> do you play yeah. now I got an accent do you play EA Sports the UFC the new one do you know what I don't play the UFC <sighs> game I was gonna challenge yeah. you I'm nasty just, in that game I'm more of like Street Fighter. Ah. Like, I, I, you can't play this UFC games. What are you talking about, man? <laughs> I play Street Fighter all day long. Um, Mortal Kombat is my favorite. Like, yeah. um, I, lo- I love that game. So yeah, it's all fighting games. I, I like. I like to play. But I did. I played the um, the UFC games, but I just didn't really feel it. Um, you know, I'm like good. That. Not really. That's a good answer. That's a good answer, Lynn. That's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Phil, <laughs> did you one. play Street Fighter Mortal Kombat? I definitely yeah. did, man. I oh, definitely did. That, that's, that's realistic. I, I can kill you. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. All right. So, let's uh, let's take it out and uh, let's, let's check this out. So, what do you think the future holds for Bellator? And after the beta fight, who's on your radar, Lynn? Uh, on my radar, uh, I, I have a list, but, you know... Oh. If it's saying the list right now, I want to surprise <laughs> and you know, do that after the fight. But I, I yeah. have a list. Um, there's some big names on that list. Mm-hmm. But I'll leave that till you know Bellator um, one one eight six. Um, gotcha. And so, what was the other question? Just where do you think Bellator is now, and in, in, in going in the future, you think it's on the rise, and you know, with all the new, you know, with all the new fighters coming in, and and basically taking a lot of the fighters from the UFC. Where do you think it, it you know, the the state of the union basically is from here on out? Oh, uh, you know what, Bellator did the, the, the right thing in paying their fighters. Mm-hmm. I think that that's a real big plus. Everyone wants to be paid, and Bellator, pardon me, sorry. Bellator are doing that and more. Like, yeah. one of my friends got, like, over half a meal for one of his fights. Like, awesome. you know, he wasn't on that before. And not mm-hmm. before. Everyone, everyone obviously hears that because I know they um, post up people's um, salaries, you know, after fights. And stuff. So people see that. People want that. And as I say, like, Gagel was the, the latest um, 
you know, guy to sign. I don't know what he's on, but you know he would have been paid probably more than what you would see were willing to pay him. Yeah. And I can just see it rising more and more. They're, they're doing great things with, they've got the kickboxing, they're doing, um, they had the Bellator tournament, um, the Dynamite, and, you know, I was, I was so, so glad to be a part of that. Um, it's just, it's just going, you know, after that, it's just rising slowly, but, but surely we, we will be number one. Um, now, this is going back to the Ryan Bader question, uh, the, you know, the fight a little bit. Uh, you're yeah. a man that is known for his submission game with eight wins by submission, but you're just as dangerous with your striking ability, standing or on the ground, as you also have six wins by KO or TKO. Uh, yeah. Ryan Bader is also dangerous on the ground or standing. Where do you feel like you have advantages to exploit so you can become the light heavyweight champion? You know, no, not to give too much away, but where do you feel you're, yeah. you're so much better than him? To, to be honest, and that's just not being big-headed, I feel like all over. I feel like my striking um, is, is better than his, and I feel like my groundwork is better than his. As, as, you, as you look on the record, um, as, at the stats, he has um, a number of wins, but a lot of them are by decision. Mm. Uh, and that just shows me he's not willing to, to go for the, for the finish. He's willing just to stay nail on top and get the, the decision. Um, or that just means he can't finish people, you know, either one. Um, for me, as you see, uh, I, I really do feel like Liam, Liam was a bigger threat than, than Ryan Bader. Hmm. He's struck in, he's long, you know what I mean? He had, he's got some six submissions. Look at, look at how he finished Tito Ortez. Yeah, yep. I mean, it was no joke and it was quick. You, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, and, and I finished him. I, I put that pressure on him. It, it was like... When Phil Davis fought um, Lee McGeary, he had 25 minutes. And yeah. it didn't look like he, he had the, the power to finish him. And I pretty much feel like they're the same fighter, Phil Davis and Ryan Bader. And I feel Ryan would be happy enough to, you know, to lay on me and try and strike <laughs> out. Seriously, I know. Uh. I feel like he's happy enough to lay on me and get, get, get the win by just, you know, stall in the fight but you see my fights i'm not on my back for long man if i get taken down i'm reversing I, I'm, I'm using my energy to get up and when i'm on top i'm making you pay I... now to add more to the the bellator question a little bit now you talked about what you like about it currently um you've been in bellator since 2013 so you have been there as the promotion has seen legitimate growth as you mentioned before you know you also have been around when the company was under two different regimes uh, the Bjorn Rebney era, and now the much more successful Scott Coker run. What are some of the big differences in the company you've noticed from one president to the other one? Um, definitely, I, I feel like Scott's looked after me a lot more, where I was promised a few things from Bjorn. I, 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 don't, know Bjorn. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it was Bjorn or my manager at the time. I, I didn't get what I was going to get. I was promised certain things. I was, like, promised like more money than I was when I started, didn't get it. And it's like, yeah, well, this is like bullshit. Um, mm. But yeah, as soon as Scott took, took him over, he's a man of his word. And I can't say a bad thing, man. Like, he said I was next in line and I am next in line. So, you know, um, I, feel, I feel like Scott knows what he wants to do and he's a clever man. Um, he's taken all the unsigned fighters. And he's paying people what they're worth. And he's put on these, these big events like that British invasion was massive. Yeah. And to fight for my for my country was real big. You know, um, and I'd love for him to do that again in England, though. Hopefully the next one will be, you know, um, the American invasion or, or something like that, or the Brazilian invasion. Some Something, you know, some invasion and come to England. <laughs> and I'd love to be a part. Do you, I mean, did you know a lot of people that had a similar situation to what you went to with Bjorn Rebney, where they were promised things and didn't get it? Was that it seemed like the only person that really liked him was Rampage because he probably gave him a lot of money. Otherwise, it seemed like most people, even King Mo, who uh, Phil trains, was very unhappy with him. Yeah, as I said, um, he, he gave obviously he, he, he did like Rampage, and you could probably tell he did as well. But yeah, um, yeah, I won't name names, but yeah, he pissed a lot of people off. No. Uh, in a recent interview, you mentioned how when you had your title shot against Emmanuel Noon, you didn't appreciate it enough. You know, three years removed from that fight and a new title shot against an even bigger name opponent in Ryan Bader, 
how has your preparation changed this time with a different level of appreciation, knowing how important this opportunity is for you and yourself going forward? I want to say 110% just flipped. Like, when I was training for my last world title fight, I tell you, no lie, I had no training partner. Wow. And no lie. What I had were like, not be fair, they weren't even pros. Because um, wow. the gym I was training at, I had um, a, like, what one one like heavyweight that was um, obviously helping me out, but he wasn't there. And seriously, I would go to the gym, and it would be no one to train me. So I'd go yeah. there, I'd just hit mitts. Wow. People, yeah, cool. and people came with me and just get me ready and stuff. And it, there wasn't the people there. I had I didn't have the facilities. Should I say I didn't have the people to help me. I didn't have the right training. Um, mm. One one time I had like five guys helping me. But no, 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 they were probably like, um, probably heaviest guy was probably 170. Wow. And, and, Damn. Like, that was, that's what I was doing, getting ready for a Man, Man Newton fight. Hmm. And, you know, I, di I didn't take it seriously enough. I was thinking, I'm winning as I am now. I don't need to go here and there. Like, I'm beating everyone. And, you know, I, I took it, I think I took it far too, uh, I didn't take it seriously enough. Yeah. You know, I, I thought I'll finish manual in the first or, two, or the second round. Um, yeah, and but obviously, I, I I had the ability to beat him, but I think if I was in America training for it, I, I would have beat. Him. But um, I feel like I just wasn't ready at that time. Mm -hmm. um, we went we went the three rounds that we did, so it went five rounds. But the three rounds that we did go, I was dominating. And then I ran out of steam. Um, that, I, I say that was because I didn't have the training. Yeah. So how much you, of a, you know, what would you say you're getting now at, at Hard Knocks 365? Oh, you seriously, know. I'm getting the, the, the total training. I'm getting everything I need. Mm. The way I trained for this fight, like, I would have beat myself up 10 times over. For this <laughs> seriously. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, the, the amount of training that I've, I've done and got myself ready for now, I was no way half as fit getting myself ready for the last fight um, three years ago. Now, for the final question, you know, and you kind of mentioned it with England, the England invasion, that was a big deal for you, you know, with Bellator. In the sports short history, there haven't been many English world champions in major promotions like the UFC, Bellator, Strikeforce, and Pride. There have been a ton of, of many top-level fighters, just getting that title has always been difficult. But how important is it to place your name up there with the likes of a Michael Bisbing to represent England and hold a major championship in this sport? Oh, that's going to be amazing to have my name up there against Bisbing's. You know, I mean, Bisbing's been in this sport for a very, very long time. Like, he'll go down as a legend and a Hall of Famer. Like, if, if he beats GSP, which I really do think he will, mm -hmm. that he'll be the only person in the history books ever to do that. Um, and obviously back in their day, they were the, the best fighters in the world. So it'll be amazing to actually, one, get the world title, and two, have my name up there um, right next to this thing. Another UK um, world, world light heavyweight champion of the world. Now, so, uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Now, anything you want to plug in terms of social media, be it Instagram, uh, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, your a website you have, anything you want to plug to listeners out there who may not be following me yet to start following and understand this might be the next light heavyweight champion of Bellator. Follow him soon. Yeah, of course. Um, you can follow me on um, Instagram, on my um, Instagram page, which is LDB underscore the swarm. Also, Twitter, which is LDB underscore the Swarm, my Facebook fan page, which is Linton the Swarm Patel. I'd also like to big up my sponsors, Legion Athletics, Himes Motors, Factor 75, DC Mouthguards, um, um, Battelle Beauty, um, I've got loads, but you know, trying to try to remember all of them. Yeah, I feel like there's a list in front of you right now. <laughs> <laughs> For real. You gotta name them off, man.
They like saying hi, Busa, also the 86ers. Um, yeah, so thank you very much um, for all your support. Um, much appreciated. And thank you to all my fans and supporters following me from all over the world. It means a lot. Uh, Phil, give them your social media as always. Good stuff, by the way, Lynn. I don't got a, I don't got a list of uh, sponsors to to name off right now. Oh, but... This guy's doing good. <laughs> Shit. Uh, yeah, man, just follow me on at Daru Strong on Twitter, Instagram, and then on my Snapchat is Daru Strong one Also, check out my website, DaruStrong.com. Sign up for the newsletter, and if you have any questions, hit up Phil at DaruStrong.com for an email. Uh, you can follow me on uh, Cheap Seas Chat on Twitter, Jericho Vendetta on Instagram. Now, don't forget to follow our site uh, and our show, Fight Strength Podcast on Facebook, Fight Strength underscore on Twitter. Also, humongous, big, gigantic thank you to our sponsors, the Iron Neck and Novagenics. Remember, for Novagenics, you can call them 561-277-8260. Find them on Facebook, Novagenics on Twitter. For the Iron Neck, the Iron Neck at Twitter uh, and iron-neck.com. Uh, um, <laughs> and and, and uh, remember, you can always find us all this episode, which was awesome, and previous episodes on iTunes, iHeartRadio. Insta, uh, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Google Play Music. Linton Vassell, thank you so, so much for coming on the show this week. We really, really appreciate it. The future champ of Bellator. Thank you very much. Can't wait. I'm new. Ah, uh, there you go, brother. I am Jason Burgos. He is Phil DeRue. Phil, say bye-bye. Peace. Uh, no, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>